Since 1898, the political relations between the island and the United States have been a transcendental issue for the citizens and governments of both countries. Puerto Rico has been a territory uh, of the United States, subject to the territorial clause of the United States Constitution. In 1917, the U.S. Congress uh, granted, conceded, ceded uh, U.S. citizenship over the inhabitants of Puerto Rico. In 1950, the Congress of the United States passed a law which allows Puerto Ricans a way of self-government and established the constitutional parameters that gave birth to the current status of Commonwealth. Uh, there are a number of things in common. Uh, the foreign relations of Puerto Rico are conducted by the United States uh, State Department. Uh, the U.S. dollar is the currency of Puerto Rico. All laws, all federal laws are applicable to Puerto Rico, etc. Puerto Ricans have held three plebiscites in the past, but these haven't been binding on Congress. Unless the United States Congress accepts the results of a plebiscite or a referendum, uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, the U.S. Congress does not have to accept uh, the results of a plebiscite coming from Puerto Rico unless it is by virtue of a law passed by the U.S. Congress. In 2009, the Puerto Rican resident commissioner, Pedro Pierluisi, sponsored a new version of the Puerto Rico Democracy Act Bill, H.R. 2499, calling for a new plebiscite. What is interesting about this plebiscite is that it is a two-part plebiscite, which is something that had not been contemplated previously. If that option wins, Puerto Rico will have plebiscites every eight years. If not, the island is authorized to conduct another plebiscite with three options provided. Statehood, independence, or free association. That could change, of course. At this point, there is a bill on the table, the House bill. Now the counterpart in the Senate has to be drafted and has to be voted on uh, to see where this leads.